morning. I'm Siwapili Rose Amador LeBeau, and this is Native Voice TV. Welcome to the show. Today, we're in a different location, and we have with us Antonia Gonzalez, who is the director of AIM West, which is the American Indian Movement, and Bill Means, all the way from Minneapolis. And you are also with AIM and the International Treaty Council. So welcome to both of you. And if you could start, I'll start with Bill, if you could give me a little bit of background about yourself. Well, first of all, greetings. Glad to be here and uh, appreciate uh, the work that you guys are doing to get the word out on behalf of our indigenous people. My name is Bill Means. I'm Oglala Lakota from the Pine Ridge Reservation in South Dakota. My Lakota name is Inakshishi, which means defender, which uh, I like a lot more than Bill. But uh, yes, I come from South Dakota. I'm part of the American Indian Movement, have been since 1971, a Vietnam veteran, a Wounded Knee veteran, and also I serve on the board of directors of the International Indian Treaty Council. And then through my American Indian Movement work locally in Minneapolis, uh, I've also been part of the mascot issue and dealing with uh, the uh, National Coalition on Racism and Sports and Media for many years, uh, since actually since the 70s. So uh, it's good to be out here, especially in this country where we all know that Stanford University was one of the first That's major right. universities to uh, rid themselves of what some people felt was an offensive uh, mascot and did cost them any money. and. Uh, Everything has gone well since that time. That just so. shows you how smart Stanford is. Yeah, huh? <laughs> so they can, uh, social change is possible, and they set the example. That's right, they did. And Tony, tell yes, us about yourself. Uh, thank you, and greetings, my relatives. Uh, my name is Antonio Gonzalez, and yes, I'm the director of AIM West. We're based in San Francisco, and we're an intertribal human rights uh, organization. Uh, uh, we're not just a single issue organization in this particular instance we'll be talking about musketry and and uh, and racism in sports but we're also involved uh, as part of American Indian movement as well with treaty rights and uh, protecting sacred sites and right. and uh, the uh, mineral natural resources that remain in the earth so uh, and we also travel internationally to the United Nations and address some of the issues that we're facing with at the local level, such as uh, the uh, sacred sites out in Vallejo. Mm -hmm. uh, about two years ago it uh, started, and, and also the uh, public uh, and school districts that carry uh, negative imagery of indigenous peoples and culture. And as Bill Means mentioned, uh, the United Nations and the passage of the UN Declaration on the Rights of Indian People by the General Assembly. Uh, among those de those articles in that declaration is Article 8, uh, Article 8E, uh, uh, specifically that refers in this case to uh, racism in sports and propaganda that tends to identify a particular people uh, as and as being discriminatory. And um, I think we're going to focus a little bit on the whole mascotting issue today, but there are so many issues, and you're right, with this, with what's taught in the schools, that definitely has to be changed. I mean, after all these years, they're still teaching inaccurate history about Native Americans, you know. Yeah, my and, background has been in education, and uh, I found that Indian people are basically edited out of existence in the public school systems of America, and that has caused a lot of these stereotype images. If all they see is wild Indians attacking wagon trains on television and the children's books, then that's the image that children grow up with. And we found even in other countries, in Europe and other places, they know more about Indian peoples here in the U.S. than even Americans do. I've heard that a lot that the people in Europe respect Indians a lot more than the people here in the United States. And even, uh, well, with, in California, the missions, they make the kids build a mission and they 
it's, it's a requirement, you know, in, I don't know, second, third grade, where they have to build the mission and, and show everyone, ha you know, happy dory <laughs> going around, you know, these... Uh, Without going into the, the attrition rate, exactly. And that, you know, that the Native people were used as slaves to build the missions, exactly. and they died and, you know... And buried it all around there. That's right. And none of that's taught. I mean, at least give a balance, yeah. but they don't. They don't. And this weekend, um, on Sunday, we were at the Levi Stadium. Yes, what a great place that was on Sunday. We had great weather, a great turnout for a very important issue. You know, one of the things that always bothers me is that one of the questions we always get from other non-Indian newscasters is, don't Indian people have more important things to do than to worry about a mascot? And of course, I answer to them is, there can be no more important issue than racism. I mean, if I'm not considered a human being and I walk through the door with some government officials and one of them calls me a redskin, we got a problem right away. So how are we gonna to get to the more serious issues of treaty rights, land yeah, rights? Absolutely. So we have to be respected for who we are as Indian people, not what people want us to be thought of. Like, for example, Daniel Snyder, the owner of the Washington football team, he says he has that mascot because it honors us. Well, we should decide what honors us. Absolutely. No man has the right to impose honor on people. And so I think this is uh, some basic human rights issues. It's not just about civil rights. There's human rights involved here. and Nobody can give you human rights. You're born with those. So all people have a level of respect in the eyes of their creator and in the eyes of each other, we should be on an equal basis. So this is just part of the, as we start out with, this lack of knowledge, this lack of teaching, this lack of education about the contributions and the positive aspects of Indian people's history here in the U.S. Absolutely, because just at that demonstration, they had... And if they're honoring, they had the, 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 the guy with the feathers and he had his face painted and he was, he was across the street from where we were at. I don't know if you saw him, but he was yeah. in the paper as well. And what is that, you know, demonstrating to everybody, you know, that this is acceptable, this is okay, this is, you know, this is, you're, you're honoring Native people by dressing like that. I mean, it... It's just, you know, a lack of education. In some of the early years of the struggle, we always had uh, to do the analogy, the comparison of other ethnic mm -hmm. groups' nickname uh, and apply that to themselves to see, would you like to see the stereotype image of a black person every time a touchdown was made by a team, somebody would run out in a black sambo right. uniform would not be tolerated. And a lot of these words even, like Sambo, like the N-word, uh, other racial stereotypes are not allowed by the federal communications system to be right. aired on television or radio, except when it comes to American Indians. Right. They allow this word to be used by the Washington football team, plastered around the world on network television all day Sunday, Monday, Thursday, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, we're looking at it constantly. Absolutely, and some of the other teams too. <laughs> you know, um, which is the baseball team that has the, uh, the, the face and- Cleveland Indians. Cleveland Indians, yes. Chief Wah. Yes, and then, <laughs> and then the chop, and you know, all of that, it's, it's, it's so degrading. And the Wahoo singing in the stadium, mm -hmm. and, and uh, the Atlanta Braves in baseball, in their stadium, they're notorious, as the whole stadium does it, you know, for their home team. But this rose is what we also can refer to as institutionalized racism. Absolutely. And the people themselves move emotionally with it without consciously now being aware of uh, the origins of the term, the metaphor, uh, the existence. They're so engulfed in the uh, society's uh, culture of, of uh, demonizing in <clears throat> overt as it is, it's also a, a covert action of them accepting it. 
Yes. It's that deep in his bill mentioned uh, we're excluded from the history books or relegated to a mere five or six uh, pages and California more specific with the 21 missions and as you say in elementary school we're taught to draw them and and never mind who built them and where they're buried and you know who right, they were exactly. all together so it's a it's a big undertaking uh, winning the hearts and minds of people of how you know we we uh, we're still perpetuating, by doing so, the cowboy and Indian wars in another form that uh, uh, the result, the casualty is really the young people mm -hmm. uh, and, and the kids, uh, indigenous kids, Indian kids across the country, you know, suffer the highest uh, suicide rate uh, and alcoholism and, and like that. Uh, but we can attribute a, a percentage of that uh, deficiency you know, from uh, the psychi the psychi uh, psychologically seeing uh, parents being laughed at and dehumanized, you know, as well as the United Nations having conducted a report that uh, it's demeaning and disrespectful and it damages the young people. Well, it is, as you said. You said you asked somebody, well, would you want to be called a black skin or a white skin? No. Mm -hmm. Somebody had a T-shirt on that said white skin the other night uh, on Sunday and apparently one of the policemen said to him I don't like your shirt because it said white skin well you know, in in 1962 when uh, the owner of the Washington team had to make the change or he couldn't have his team in Washington this was like uh, from uh, President John F Kennedy giving the owner an ultimatum to change the name or you can't play because the stadium was also built on some federal funding or, or something to the effect that uh, discrimination had to be uh, eliminated. It was the last uh, football team in the National Football League uh, to ha allow people of color onto, uh, to play in the team. It was the last team. But there, there was a protest there at the headquarters of the Washington team by uh, neo-Nazis and, and uh, you know, white people who wanted to keep the name and they were walking around with uh, signs that said uh, uh, keep redskins white you know they didn't want uh, non white people to play in football so they were carrying around but this is how ridiculous yeah. it gets and uh, even it, it, can, it almost seems like theater but it, it's very real it plays an impression of course Hollywood lays this type of impression with performances and so this is the bigger theater in reality where the uh, imposition of, of racism and dehumanizing particular people and is what we want to stereotype. and resolve it now mm -hmm. at the beginning of this 21st century. So we can move on to the other issues, as Bill says, you know, uh, that we need to, to talk about to be serious, you know, face to face. Now, is this an educational process that AIM has taken on across the nation? Because I understand there was a similar demonstration in Arizona and different other areas. Oh, yes, definitely so. Wherever we have people that are supportive of this effort, we will be at the Washington football team wherever they play. And we're actually uh, going to culminate at the 28th of uh, December at the final home game of the Washington football team a national effort to turn out a large march again in their home field. And uh, this is why we're asking uh, people in the National Football League to consider what had happened to the owner of the Los Angeles Clippers, who never really said the N-word. All he did was insinuate it, right. that they shouldn't be at his games. And he was forced to sell the team. And so if Dan Snyder uh, wants to bring this type of uh, ill feelings, this type of bad attention to the National Football League, he should be asked to do the same. And we found that there's even a movement among the Jewish people to make that statement at our uh, event on the 28th of December in the home game. Some national Jewish organizations are going to start moving towards asking Dan Snyder to sell the team if he doesn't want to change the name. And that, that's, that's good because I would hope at least other ethnic groups and people of color would I understand what we're going through and, and support our efforts, you know, 
because obviously we support all the other efforts, you know, of other <laughs> people of color. So it seems like something that um, they would stand up and support. Mm -hmm. Rose, I think we're 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 at the uh, the uh, tip of the iceberg, so to speak, in uh, race relations in this country, and we have a ways to go. But just as uh, we're being stigmatized and and pigeonholed, if you will, in a particular category of caricatures to demean. Uh, there's other racial issues that North America, U.S. proper, is having to contend with and still and is obstructed along the way, such as the immigration, for example, and the millions of people that are here and the children and the parents being divided, separated uh, for lack of a, of a good immigration bill Mm -hmm. that would uh, allow that and then in with the African-American peoples in this country and what we're witnessing right now in these days of in Ferguson of how yes. African people are still also stigmatized from a, a plantation slavery uh, attitude of where their place is in this country and we need to break out of all these uh, forms of, of racism and the dynamics that we have to go through on a daily basis to to make that correction and winning the hearts and minds uh, in this country and uh, and the world issues that we're also faced with, you know, we're all one, but racism is uh, is what this country was born in and of. But uh, we have an opportunity, all of us together, to uh, find a way to live peaceably and be a model to mm -hmm. the world of what that means as well. That's true. Now, Bill, you've been involved with AIM, as you both have been, for many, many years. Tell me about the early years. Well, the early years, I can remember one of my first uh, demonstrations was uh, against a movie that was called A Man Called Horse, you may remember. And uh, we went to the theater to demonstrate that we don't really need a white man to save us, that this was a stereotype of the Western movies and we wanted it stopped. Well, one of the, uh, should we say, uh, negative reactions that we got was that we made the movie famous, so everybody went to see it. <laughs> <laughs> they wanted to know what you were talking about. Huh? <laughs> so sometimes you have to be very tactical, you know, in your approach to these issues. But I have seen tremendous change uh, from that time when people were spitting on us because we were asking them to uh, remove a movie that we felt was racist, derogatory. Uh, now we have a lot of support from all races, and even in South Dakota, they changed the date of uh, October 12th, traditionally celebrated as Columbus Day. They sell, uh, they changed that date, and I believe it was uh, 1991, to be Native American Day. So we have made some significant changes, both in uh, policy, in terms of education, self-determination, we now got our Indian schools that are controlled by local boards. Uh, uh, we got uh, schools that are run, operated by Indian teachers and Indian administrators. And I think uh, some of those areas, uh, of course, a lot of people it took working together, uh, educational workers. That's been one of, the, I think, the shining lights of Indian country has been our ability to develop Indian curriculum, Indian schools, so that at least we can tell our own children right. the truth and keep our culture, languages alive. And, and so this is uh, some of the progress that I've seen as well as the idea of culture and spirituality where our people are no longer branded as heretics, as devil worshipers, but that we too, since by the way only 1987, we're allowed to have the Indian Religious Freedom Act. So this has been a tremendous renaissance of our ceremonies and our songs and our dances, both socially and uh, in terms of our own healing and religious activities. So I think that those areas have been the ones in treaty rights now we're using in a lot of these environmental struggles. And so it's, uh, it's gonna be a very formidable uh, campaign to go against these various issues that uh, affect the daily lives of our people. We have a lot more allies today. That's, uh, and we need a lot more. <laughs> now, do you, well, I know you're not in South Dakota now, but are, is there still a lot of mining going on there on the reservation? Yes, they're trying to uh, 
reestablish the uranium mining industry. But there's something about uranium mining that nobody wants to waste. Uh, the, the state of Nevada has fought for years because they had a, a mindset of developing a national repository for nuclear waste in the treaty lands of uh, Nevada, of the northern Utes and of the uh, other tribes in that area. And so uranium mining kind of went down for a while, now it's back again. They already mined all the gold out of the Black Hills. The uh, mine was there for over 100 years, over $2 trillion worth of gold, so they polluted enough water over there. But also uh, now we have the pipeline. I know. That one of, they want to bring this dirty oil from the tar sands in northern Canada through our territory. So that's kind of the main issue that everybody's fighting. We have a new CIA, which is good, uh, Cowboy and Indian Alliance. <laughs> <laughs> so we've had some yeah. small victories, but it's building this yeah. great coalition of people that want to protect the land. I think it's a turning point in history of the environmental movement as we fight these major oil companies. It is so critical out there. It seems like they they pick South Dakota for everything for the mining. A friend of uh, a friend of mine said that he was he and his brother were frying hamburgers and all the yellow was coming out from the the mining. You know that because the cows eat, drink the water, yeah. eat the grass, and he said it just gets in the food. Yeah. You know, and he said we're burying people every week out there. Uh huh. You know, yeah. so. Rosa, I think on the bigger issue, that Mil, uh, Bill just referred to the uh, the CIA as the Cowboy and Indian Alliance, which they were very key uh, in helping be a part of organizing the climate summit mm -hmm. that we witnessed in September in uh, New York City. Uh -huh. Nearly ha uh, half a million people, you know, wow. to the streets in New York City. But uh, uh, I say that uh, that uh, Bill and the Alliance, the Cowboy and Indian Alliance very much a part of influenced by the American Indian movement mm -hmm. and uh, these are the men and women of the late 60s and early 70s that really changed the the course and the fabric uh, of in US history and uh, these are men and women also that come from boarding schools uh, you know their childhood separated from their parents on reservations mm -hmm. which by and large does continue in South Dakota and uh, many of the leadership uh, uh, came from uh, the prisons uh, as well and uh, you know from uh, uh, police uh, patrols that they had to do themselves in the community uh, so you know uh, these were young guys that, that that are now the elders in the community and I happen to know them I come from the Chicano movement in particular uh, where the American Indian movement really broadened the circle uh, to to invite include the Chicano the Mexican American mm -hmm. awakening and broadening that intertribal mm -hmm. uh, relationships that we have today. And it's growing the consciousness uh, with an environmental view in the sense of the spirituality that embraces the, the sacredness of Mother Earth and, and those kind of principles. So there is a, a paradigm shift even among the Mexican, the, the Chicano, the Latino thinking uh, more of their indigenousness. And I attribute that by and large to the growth, development, the founding of the American Indian movement. That's a good point. Now we have, I knew this was gonna happen, but we only have about two and a half minutes left. So Bill, can you close with giving us some insight on where you see this movement going with the mascotting um, and the pipeline? I mean, we were almost out of time, but yeah. whatever you could get in. Well, I think first of all, this uh, mascot issue, you know, it has deep roots. We have to recognize it as racism for what it is. And we can no longer treat it with kid gloves because if you look at the atrocities of Indian people, whether it be Wounded Knee, 1890, or now this year, the 175th anniversary of the Sand Creek Massacre. In 1862, they hung 38 Sioux in Mankato, Minnesota, simultaneously, mm -hmm. the largest mass hanging in the history of this whole hemisphere. These are the roots of the racism that people think they can treat any Indian person any way they want to. It can take their land, it can literally kill them, and nobody has to be held accountable. It's this type of roots of the racism of the attitudes of people like Daniel Snyder who think they can bestow 
impose their honor on, on our people, and we're not supposed to be offended. And so I think this old Custer frontier mentality still exists in various pockets in the United States, and so that's what we're really fighting is racism. And racism has been the root of many struggles throughout the years. And I think it brings us together again to see what's going on in, whether it's in Missouri, whether it's a, what is it, 43 missing students yeah. uh, in Mexico. Mm -hmm. uh, people think they can treat Indian people with uh, impunity. That's true. Thank you both for being here. And I, you at home, I hope you got the message. I hope you support the cause. Change the name, change the mascot of the Redskins and all those other teams oh. that are, have derogatory native images for their mascots. So thank you both for being here. Thank, thank you for you. all the work you've done. All right. Thank you, and we'll see you again next week. Good night. Indigenous soul, indigenous soul.